November 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 John chapter 3 of the New Testament. See what sort of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called God's children, and indeed we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Dear friends, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that whatever it is revealed, we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is. And everyone who has this hope focused on Him purifies himself, just as Jesus is pure. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. Indeed, sin is lawlessness. And you know that Jesus was revealed to take away sins, and in Him there is no sin. Everyone who resides in Him does not sin. Everyone who sins has neither seen Him nor known Him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as Jesus is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was revealed, to destroy the works of the devil. Everyone who has been fathered by God does not practice sin, because God's seed resides in him, and thus he is not able to sin, because he has been fathered by God. By this the children of God and the children of the devil are revealed. Everyone who does not practice righteousness, the one who does not love his fellow Christian, is not of God. For this is the gospel message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not like Cain who was of the evil one and brutally murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his deeds were evil, but his brothers were righteous. Therefore do not be surprised, brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have crossed over from death to life because we love our fellow Christians. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his fellow Christian is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. We have come to know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, that we ought to lay down our lives for our fellow Christians. But whoever has the world's possessions and sees his fellow Christian in need and shuts off his compassion against him, how can the love of God reside in such a person? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this we will know that we are of the truth and will convince our conscience in his presence, that if our conscience condemns us that God is greater than our conscience and knows all things. Dear friends, if our conscience does not condemn us, we have confidence in the presence of God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing to Him. Now this is His commandment, that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He gave us the commandment. And the person who keeps His commandments resides in God and God in Him, now by this we know that God resides in us, by the Spirit He has given us. God, it seems like I'm having the John 3 conversation with so many people lately. People are really struggling with wanting to be in control of their salvation. Uh, that's the easiest way I can put it. I've had friends tell me that they're working for their salvation and we know that works doesn't produce salvation I've had other people say well I'm gonna do that relationship thing with God but first I want to do living like I want to live my life first and then I will settle down and live a life with God and I had another person who said I think I'm saved I keep asking Jesus to come into my heart and I just don't know if I'm saved or not and you know it's so interesting that first john 3 shows up in this reading plan now where i seem to be having many many of these conversations and all of these conversations all the basis for these conversations come back to people wanting to do things the way that they want to do them not according to your word and people will read first john 3 and freak out i can never do that i can't be perfect i can't not sin 
And that's not what John's talking about in the slightest, obviously. He's being really clear that if you are a Christian, if you are in a relationship with you, God, that your desire to to just go out and, and live a reckless life of sin doesn't happen. And I, I know that from personal experience because before you came into my life, I really didn't care. Um, I cared about other people's feelings. I was one of those nice people. Um, but I still did whatever I wanted to do uh, without a second thought. Uh, but when you have this new heart uh, that you've given us, this new life, uh, the Holy Spirit living in us, there's a different thought process that happens. And I always tell my friends, it's one of the easiest ways to know that you're saved is this completely different thought process and the fruit that happens from it, uh, as we know those who are walking uh, in the Spirit. God, we don't get to make up these rules. <laughs> Your incredibly generous and not deserving gift that you have given us of salvation is completely from the death of your son, Jesus Christ, for us. It was a sacrificial gift, an unblemished gift. A selfless gift and one of unconditional love for us again something that we so don't deserve and we will never fully understand we don't get to earn our salvation there's nothing we can do nothing we can do to earn our salvation and it's not a keep or lose situation once we have salvation once you have given it given us that gift we don't get to give it back um, you say multiple places throughout the Bible about how you will help us and keep us if we are truly in the faith, if we are truly your children. It is your salvation to give because you are our sovereign God. It has nothing to do with us. However, with this changed heart, we have this desire to do things that we didn't do before you were part of our life. Yeah, we might have been nice people. We might have been good people. But nothing close to what we look like with this new transformed heart, this new transformed life that we have. Our desire to sin habitually is gone. Doesn't mean that we don't sin, because we do, and we will <laughs> until we get to heaven. Um, but what it does mean is we have a different filter that we look at, at things through. So if we're trying to work our way into being saved, that's not going to happen. Uh, we can't work to keep our salvation. That's not going to happen because, again, it's not how you had planned it out. You had planned it out that you are our sovereign Lord. And we need to be really clear about that. As for the people who say that they want to live their life first and then, and then they'll do a life with you later, um, that's kind of a whole other level of conversation that I'm starting to have with friends of mine. But God, this power of this love and this transformation transformation that first john 3 is talking about is what we need to hold on to that if we haven't started a relationship with you yet this is what that relationship looks like this is what it feels like and i realize until you get there you're not going to completely know what it is i'm talking about i understand that because i didn't know and it was really scary walking up to this potential big transformation but i can tell you god being on the other side is just crazy awesome. I am incredibly humble to be on the other side to, to have my salvation from the fact that I don't deserve it. Every day I mess up. And every day you forgive me for the things I mess up on. And I work harder to to help your kingdom in this world. It's not works to earn my salvation. It's just with this new changed heart. I have this desire to do what is best for your kingdom. And more importantly, as John talks about, to do what is best for your people. That everyone comes to salvation. Everyone comes to that point of having a relationship with you. When he talks about loving your brother, do you love them enough to do what you need to do so that they hear about God. They hear about your son Jesus Christ. They hear about your word of the Bible. Do we love them enough that we want everyone to have that same opportunity to be one of your elect?
God, today I pray for all those people that are right before that, that are asking questions, that are thinking about what does a life look like with you, God, that are trying to understand something that is bigger than themselves, way bigger than themselves. Just like uh, John talks about how uh, our conscious may condemn us, but you're so much bigger than our conscious, so much bigger than our heart, so much bigger than anything we can imagine. And God, I just pray for them today. I remember that path. It's scary and it's exciting and it's frightening. Last night at the Bible study, I likened it to when you're in one room and you know you've done something bad and you have to walk to the other room to tell your mom or dad that you did something wrong. And that, that eight steps between the two rooms is like the longest eight steps with all these thoughts going through your head, playing out the scenarios of what could happen. And you get to that other room and, and all your mom or dad does is just give you a big hug and, and tell you that they love you. That's what it's going to be like for these people, God. And I know they don't know that yet, that you're just going to wrap your arms around them and forgive them of their sins and tell each and every one of them that you love them so much. So in the meantime, God, I just pray that, that you can be with them that you can put people with them to walk alongside of them, those eight steps that they need to, to get to the other room. And that you will put that education in their hearts, that understanding in their hearts. You say that if we ask for that understanding, that you will show us what we need. And God, I pray for that, for these people who are starting to ask, what does that look like to truly follow you, God? God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for a love that I don't understand. And never will, at least not here in this lifetime. And I thank you that you think somehow I'm worthy of that love, that forgiveness, that freedom. I love you so much, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.